Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And uh Alex, uh Nathan. You have, hey, I was just wondering, uh you said that you've found this uh fun new game. I have. Oh, tell me a little bit about this. I, I, I was wait. telling you about it. It's it's apparently uh really really big right now. Uh everyone apparently is playing it, or at least everyone. everyone. Uh everyone on the internet says they're playing it. Everyone on the internet says they're playing yeah, it. I mean, so I don't necessarily, be necessarily know how much I believe everybody on the internet, but a lot of people have been like talking about how great this game is. You can believe everything you see on the internet. That's oh. rule number one. Well, I try to. There's like four million or something players for this this thing. Something like that. That's a lot of people to play a game. Though. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Okay, so so what what is this amazing game? It's Raid Shadow Legends. <gasps> Raid Shadow Legends? <laughs> no! It's taking the mobile world by storm, Nathan. It's taking the mobile world by storm. Oh, I have to I have to look this up right now. I want to be part of the storm. I need to see this for myself. Wow. 10 million downloads with a 4.1 out of 5 for a rating. Out of 718,000 reviews. Wow, this must be good. Oh, wow. Console quality graphics. Whew. Which console? <laughs> I mean, at least PlayStation 1. <laughs> it's pretty impressive stuff here. You know, now that you mention it, I- I've heard so many people talking about this game. I'll have to, I'll have to try it out myself. Fun story. I have, I have actually tried this out. Heard You've about played it. Raid Shadow Legends, Nathan? I have played Raid Shadow Legends. Yes, I have, actually. <laughs> Everyone's already stopped listening. <laughs> Hashtag not sponsored. Yeah, I should, we should probably mention at this point that um, we, we did not get sponsored by Raid <laughs> Shadow Legends. <laughs> We're like the one people that, one, one, uh, one outlet that did not get a Raid Shadow Legends offer for sponsorship. They, they wanted to be a sponsor for everybody, uh, except us. So, fun fact, Alex, I actually did, because I saw it everywhere, and I was like, alright, let me look at it, um, because my relationship with mobile games is basically, let me try it for a little bit and see what this is, and uh, I'll probably put it down after, like, an hour or so, but, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it will be good. Um, so, first thing I should probably mention is, you know how, like, in all of those sponsorship deals, they're like, uh, if you use the offer code, you get, like, 100,000 silver now, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, whatever, how much, how much fake currency. Yeah, um, the thing that they don't get around to telling you is that you accrue, like, 100,000 silver in the first, like, seven minutes of the game when you're playing. <laughs> Perfect, the money is inflation is crazy. Here's a billion shmoney, but unfortunately, like, a, a, a can of soda... Is is also a million shmoney, so enjoy. I thought you were gonna say here's a million shmoney, but everything in the game costs money and the conversion rate is five million mm-hmm. shmoney to one money. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's the premium currency. You know, the premium currency you can actually buy something. There's there's the shit currency that they'll give you, and then there's the one you pay for that actually gives you stuff. That's part of the plan, folks. I feel like we need to have some Yorkshire tea right here. Oh, we need all of the Yorkshire tea. Yes. Hashtag not sponsored by Yorkshire tea either. No one sponsors this <laughs> show. Our patron. Our, uh, our patrons. Sponsors. Our patrons. I'm, one of our patrons is Yorkshire tea. No, I'm kidding. I wish. One of our patrons is Rage Shadow Legends. <laughs> okay. I can tell you a little bit about my experience playing Raid Shadow Legends, and I think that it's indicative of a, a lot of mobile titles. There was a, a quote that maybe it's apocryphal, but Sig Myers once said uh, that uh, games are a series of interesting decisions. Uh, whether he actually said it or not is a little bit misleading, but but it's accredited to him. Um, I can tell you the problem with Raid Shadow Legends is that there are no interesting decisions to make in the game. They basically throw you into like this this uh, battle. It's a raid, and you have your four your four characters, and they go in, and uh, you're supposed to, like, say, yeah, attack this guy, and attack this guy, and attack this guy. 
you get through that initial run, and then they actually get into the game proper, and you realize that you can actually hit autoplay. And uh, then you basically can just sit back, wait for a minute for the whole thing to stop, and just say, okay, yeah, I got my experience, now go to the hub. Okay, now that you're at the hub, they direct you to where you can upgrade your character and tell you what upgrades you can take for your character now. Oh, <laughs> So it's like, one of those one of those games that like my coworker plays where it's like, oh yeah, you can do these things with your characters and then when you once you get here you can do auto. Yeah. It yeah. just goes through the level for it you. It will by, play by the itself. game for you. Yeah, it it can play yeah, basically it will play the game for you. Mm-hmm. I don't understand the point of these. Yeah, I don't either, which is the reason why I didn't play it all that long. Um because because and, and unfortunately it is indicative of the problem of a lot of mobile games. Um, because one of the things that you find is that the series of events that they insist that you go through is pretty much led, like, I am always looking for an option when I'm playing a game game, where I can kind of go off the beaten path or look at some of the other stuff that's going on, and it's so hand-holdy, really for the majority of this, that you're like, well, I basically don't have input into it. You just, you're telling me, click this button. So I'm going to click that button pretty much the majority of the game for me. Yeah. Um, not not much outside of it. I even I even had that problem with things like um, Elder Scrolls Blades, which I got a chance to play, too. Oh, yeah. Which it is another one that kind of gives you the false sense that you can do a bunch of different things where it's like, hey, here's here's the board with all of the various things that you could do. All of these missions that you can take, except a lot of them are past your level cap or they're locked off. So basically this one. Just do this one next. <laughs> There's not a lot to it beyond that. So I'm I'm glad that uh, you brought up Raid Shadow Legend, uh, because <laughs> it kind of illustrates some of the problems related to mobile games and the mobile game model. And we kind of have to talk about it, because it is starting to seep into the market in general passed this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's turning everything into the mobile market because there's money involved. Yeah. Sure. Not from me, but there's money involved. People will buy stuff. People yeah. are dumb. I agree. Some people will will purchase uh, the shmoney. And, I, and I, as I said, people are dumb. I, I agree. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's important that we talk a little bit about it because people bemoan the idea of of the mobile game market because, well, mobile gaming isn't real gaming and everything like that. I don't want to be that kind of gatekeeper. I don't want to say that, you know, if you're you're not enjoying a game, you're not a gamer. That's not me. Um, The problem, though, that I will put forth is that I don't really know if I consider mobile games to actually be games (laughs) because... The reason I say that is because I don't think that they're built with the intention of making a good game. There's very little, and you can you can debate me on that. You can fight me on this if you really want. We can go on a raid, uh, if we want. But mm. that the mm. ma- yeah, see what I did there? I see the what ma- you did there. That the majority of like the mobile games, and unfortunately, I think raid Shadow Legends is in that camp. Is It's not so much about making an interesting game that lets you really think about the game, engage with it. It's there to try and get you into a loop so that you get used to going through this this reward loop that gets you used to spending money and hopefully spending real-world money at a certain point. It's the same basic mechanics that they use at, like, the casinos. (laughs) To try and keep you playing and keep you playing and eventually spend more and more money. But there's not really a part in that where they wanted to also create an interesting game. Like, Raid occasionally talks about the idea of this deep lore. Does it have any? It's apparently. (laughs) Like, apparently it's supposed to have, like, this history and storyline and everything. I didn't see it. It's the end game that you find that. Probably. It's, it's a dark RPG fantasy world. It's, it's considered a collect and battle in a dark RPG fantasy world. That's what they say about the game. Oh. Um, from the actual publisher. Uh, battle your way through a visually stunning realistic fantasy RPG with hundreds of champions from 16 playable factions. I didn't even know there were factions. 
I, I literally, there was never a part in where when I was playing where I found out that there were anything about factions. So you that's apparently need to go reinstall this game and play longer and tell me about these factions. Apparently, I do. There's no, nothing stopping you from playing it either. Everything except is you don't want me from playing Rage <laughs> except you... <laughs> my willpower, uh, which I don't generally have a lot of. I've got a lot for this. My social <laughs> life, I do have one of those. You have one of those. Okay. I, I have more of one than than you do. Let's leave it at that. Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> oh, here's another wonderful trope that you end up with is develop and manage your bastion. Upgrade your own personal fortress. It's a hub. My own personal hub? Yeah, which looks like everybody else's personal hub, just for the record. <laughs> it so it's looks... a shared area? No, it's yours, but it's set up exactly like everyone else's would be. It's like the it's that that thing where you're in a game and they they're like here's your town and everything is set up with different places that you can click on and do specific things at like the town hall and the armory and the weaponsmith and stuff like that. So it's like my uh garrison in Warlords of Draenor from World of Warcraft. I know you didn't play I, that one. Yeah, you got a garrison yes. and you got plots of, you know, plots you could put buildings on. You had a limited selection of buildings you could put in them. Mm -hmm. And so everyone ended up having very similar. Everything looked almost the same for all the horde players, as all the other horde players that had their garrisons, because you only had a limited collection of buildings to choose from, in mm -hmm. a limited number of places to put them. Yeah. And depending on what type of gamer you were, it was like, yeah, I'm going to use these ones because they're the ones that give me the best bonuses for what I want to do with my character. It's kind of like that. Okay. Can I can I auto hub it? Uh, no, I don't think that they have that technology yet. Because then I can just where you can like have the game play itself entirely for me, and you don't have to do a single thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just install the game, and it's like you've won. You on will one... win in six hundred hours when we're done playing this game for you. On the uh, on the other hand, what I kind of like about this is that uh, I don't have to worry about them selling me a time saver because I'm already not even playing the game. So. Oh, what if they could make it so you finish uh, missions instantly, Nathan? Oh wow, that would save me zero amount of time. It would mean <laughs> you I'm... can do. It would mean if you would actually play the game more then because you'd be going, oh, mission's done. Click 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 click. You'd have to actually push buttons. To start yeah. Missions. Oh, that would be amazing. Oh, don't you love it when they have those games where this actually happened in Blades? Of course it happened in Elder Scrolls Blades. You can open a chest, but it takes you like three seconds unless you pay one of the little crystals to make it not take three seconds to open the chest. Oh, so it gets rid of the animation? Yeah, you don't need to wait the three seconds for the chest to open. You can like just pay, pay one of the premium currency. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's totally worth every penny. Oh, it so I, is. I feel like if they made the chest take 30 minutes to open with an intricate animation of you lockpicking, maybe that would be worth it. Oh, well, that's the later chests. The basic <laughs> wooden chests, it takes, it takes like five seconds. But then when they get into like the silver chests and the gold chests, those take like 15, 20 minutes or 30 to open? minutes. open? Yeah. They, they'll be in like your inventory, but you have to start the counter once they're in your inventory, and then wait for them to open. Do you have to so, have your screen on the chest the whole time? No, but you can't open any other chests until that one is done opening. Well, that's just predatory gameplay practices. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. And I think there's a, a certain number of chests that you can open, or a certain number of chests you can have in your inventory. One. You can have one. Yeah, you can have like four or five, I think. Ooh, fun fact about Raid Shadow Legends, folks. Um, Battle Pass Season 1 is here. Okay, we gotta talk about Battle Passes. <laughs> Seasons <laughs> Passes? Yeah, and there's- Battle Passes? There, yeah, there, there are about, Battle Passes. <laughs> how about we stop making them a thing that people have to pay for if you're not going to fill a year, or quote-unquote, season with content updates? This does seem to be a big problem that unfortunately feels like it was a Fortnite thing originally. <laughs> But the idea of, like, you know, I have to have a battle pass so that I can get all of these fun upgrades and, and stuff. Like, you could just reward me for playing the game. I know that that's a weird idea that you would actually reward people for playing the game or give them actual content for the thing. Unfortunately, they don't actually say anything about the deep lore of this. Oh, but I do love that they talk about the deep strategic gameplay. 
Deep strategic, um, let let the AI do it for you. Got it. I love the deep strategic e- a- gameplay of hitting auto and walking away. <laughs> this is problematic of a lot of your kind of generic mobile games that, that hit onto this, which is that there really aren't a lot of interesting elements to it. It's very passive by its nature. And I like games that I feel actively participating in. I like to feel like yeah. when I'm playing a game... You're actually playing the game? That I'm actually playing the game, yeah. And, and perhaps the reason why you see so many of these kinds of games come to mobile has a lot to do with the fact that people are on their phones, they're in a rush, they're moving, they're in transit, they're always going somewhere. So if they want to play a game, they're mostly just trying to get a dopamine high of, hey, I got a reward for a thing. You don't necessarily concentrate that much on what's happening in the game. You're not actively looking at this as media. You're looking at this as passive media. And so you can get away with a lot of stuff when you're looking at it in that regard. But I don't really consider that much of a game if you're not actively involved in it at the time. Do you see that as your relationship with games, like when you're playing? Yeah, I don't I don't like passive things. Like, if I'm sitting there doing nothing, then why am I playing this game? Could, could you imagine a passive version of, like, D&D? Like, where, 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 where the game just plays your character for you? Sure, that's, that's cr- Critical Role. <laughs> <laughs> that's any live play that I'd want to watch. They're playing that's the game play. so I don't have to. It's, the, it's kind of the difference between, like, watching football and playing football. You know, am I going to watch it as a spectator or am I going to play it directly? Technically, with something like Raid Shadow Legend, you are playing the game, but in such a very limited capacity that I don't really know if it truly counts. It's enough to make you think that you're playing a game. My, my coworker plays them at work. Like, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, that's yeah. the thing right now. We keep yelling at each other across the, uh, the department. Like, get off your phone and stop playing Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah. He doesn't and... play Raid, he plays other games, but the point is, he's always playing something that's gotten, like, he'll set his phone down and it's playing the game by itself. I'm like, what's the point of even having that open if all he's doing is playing by itself? I'm like, just fucking don't. What would, be, <laughs> what would be referred to as an idle game? The idle tappers, where, like, you, you, the game will just kind of do stuff in the background. Which, uh, you know, as a gameplay standpoint, I don't really understand, because... Then what they'll do all the time is, uh, you know, wait three hours for them to do this thing, or you can pay so that you don't have to wait those three hours. But if the whole idea of the game is that it can be idle, I don't understand why I would bother paying for something if you assume that I'm not going to be there all the time. Like, <laughs> I, maybe I'm not as idle as your game would suggest. Sometimes they get me. I remember I played uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes for a while, and that does have, like, a hero collection element. But that is also another one, and I eventually stopped playing after, like, a a year or so. And I had a pretty good guild, actually. Um, But it didn't stop the fact that they make such a convoluted number of things that you have to do to upgrade your characters. I literally played that one from the time it, like, launched. And I got on every day, and I had a pretty good guild that I built. And still... When they did, like, the special events for, like, the new movies and everything, I didn't have a strong enough team to do the, the events and get those characters. <laughs> Having actually played it every day, <laughs> that's inherently a broken game, folks. It's inherently broken, because what that means is that the only way you can actually do the live events that they put into the game because it's a live service is by paying for the premium currency to get ahead of what the natural progression of the game is. You you see what I'm talking about here? (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. I mean, again, I don't play mobile games, so I don't really, I don't really fall into that trap so often. So yeah, let me let me see if I can explain it in terms of uh, something that you you do play. Imagine imagine I had WoW, right? Yeah. Now now imagine like the day WoW dropped, like ten ten years ago or something. You got on and you started playing, and you were playing like every day, 
and your character was advancing and everything, and you were getting some better ma materials and everything. And then, like a month after the game drops, they're like, we have a major event, and you can get this amazing, like, legendary great axe. But you realize that your character still doesn't have the actual power necessary to, to get that axe. <laughs> you still don't have that ability, even though you've been playing from, like, day one and, be, and, and played consistently. Are you, you playing hardcore, though? Yes. You play in hardcore. You got, no, you gotta play hardcore. You gotta hardcore go at this game. Oh yeah, you gotta go hardcore all the time. You gotta, you gotta be one of those speedrunners assholes that gets the world's first fucking 100 level 20 character. Yeah. On World yeah. of Warcraft. World's first level 120 in right. six hours after the fucking expansion dropped. It's like, cool. I'm glad yeah. you have enough practice and desire to just do everything right away. I'm glad you're not having any fun doing this. I don't know. They have fun doing it, I guess. They do it because they think it's fun. I don't have any fun. But you see, so. in this, in this uh, fictional scenario that I'm putting forth, you actually can't advance that quickly. Because what, what would happen in this scenario is they'd say that you can only really advance like a level every day. Like, there's a max cap of what you can actually achieve in that time. Okay, yeah. Except if, well, if you were to buy the premium currency, maybe you could get better gear than you normally okay. could. Yeah, so that, that is the pay-to-win, then. It's that the, is the pay-to-win. You cannot be at the level you need to be at for this unless you have paid to be there. Right. And that kind of leads back into that whole idea that it's not that they want to make a good game. They want to get you to spend money. If you ever have to build a game where you can't be at the top of, like, the raid, the raid Shadow Legend board, if you're, you're not at the top of the raid boards or anything after playing consistently and, and religiously and everything, just by actually playing the game you can't be at the top, then the game is fundamentally broken by its very design. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, Extra Credits has done something on this. Uh, yeah, on YouTube. probably. Probably uh, Game Maker's Toolkit probably has, too. I'm sh um, yeah, it would be a, if a we bunch see him. Yeah, um, if we see him. I think it's, uh, like, what, is it the Skinner Box method, I believe? Oh, that reward sounds weird. And whatever. I can't mm -hmm. remember what that is. If if you're not familiar with what Skinner Box is, look it up yourself. Right, yeah. It's, um, the, the, the thing that they actually had talked about at several game conferences w for mobile developers was this idea of turning something from uh from like a habit into a hobby uh so the idea of get people used to a certain cycle um and this and, uh, a, a cycle that rewards uh dopamine too that gives yeah. them that feel good yeah 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 but get people interested in the idea of like especially when it comes to like premium currency you give them some but start them off, and actually, Raid kind of does this too. Raid Shadow Legends does this too. Raid Shadow Legends. Have them spend a little bit, just a little bit of that currency, like at the beginning, to get something. Now they're in the habit of doing that. Because they, now they're like, oh yeah, it's not hard to spend the currency on this thing. So now you're in that habit. Oh, oh it's yeah. just a little bit of money. It's, not, it's only a couple dollars. It's not bad. Oh, but see, they give you they give you some up, up at the front, like how how in Vegas they give you some free chips so you can go to the slot machine, and then they remove all up. the clocks from the building so you don't know what time it is, and there's no window so you can't see if it's light out. Yeah, you can't tell. It's just it's just an illusion. But what they what they'll do is they'll usually like comp you something on the house. They kind of do that in a lot of mobile games, too, is that they comp you a little bit of the premium currency so that you can buy this thing. But then they kind of, like, force you to buy that thing. <laughs> like, you're not proceeding until you click on this goddamn button. And then you click on that button, and the idea is to try and get your brain wired to say that it's not really that big a deal to spend this virtual currency on a thing, even though then they want to sell you that virtual currency for actual money <laughs> down the road. But if they get you into that habit, the eventual uh, part of this is to make it into a hobby so that this is literally just second nature to you. And once you get into the second nature thing, hopefully they can monetize you and turn you into an actual source of income. 
But for me, that's that's not a game. That's basically just going to Monhegan Sun. The big problem that I have now, and I'm sure you're aware of this too, is that these sort of mechanics have started to creep into premium games that you already pay for. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yes. As we've talked about on the show, I'm sure several times before, so I won't harp on it, but loot boxes, uh, slot machines, um, microtransactions, live service models, they're introducing it into games that you already paid like full price for on a console. Yes, they are. <laughs> so that you can have the benefit of paying even more money if I'm trying out a mobile game and it's free and I can see if I like it and say no because I'm not really enjoying it. It's another thing if you're asking me to pay for like Anthem and uh, saying that, yeah, Anthem's a live service and there's going to be more content and then you never get around to giving me that <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or have unlocks like, uh, or, or an online store for real currency like they did with Fallout 76, you know? Those, oh boy. Yeah, I know. There's, hey, Wastelanders is coming, Alex. After the Battle Royale, they finally got around to the actual thing people wanted, so... Are people still playing Fallout 76? I haven't not heard really. about that in a while. Not really. Oh, okay. But, I but... mean, they it does, it's not going to stop them from putting new stuff in it. Uh, I don't know. That's one of those things where I feel like at some point maybe I'll go back and play... Once the Wastelanders thing hits, if, if there's a free play days or something, I'll go on just to see if it's any better. But I don't hold out a lot of hope. At the same yeah. time, BioWare had just announced that they're doing a major overhaul to Anthem. Yeah, I heard about that too, which yeah. I don't understand why. Are they trying to recoup the money they lost? I don't know if it's that they're trying to recoup any money that, they're, that they lost. Maybe they're trying to recoup their reputation at this point. Uh, I mean, that would be good too, but I don't think EA cares. <laughs> just to kind of put a cap on this, I have determined that I actually actively hope that this big thing with Anthem fails. I I actively hope it fails because I feel like if Anthem after a year of really not doing much with the game can go back overhaul it no man's sky style and people will forgive them their sins after all then that time. Then they won't learn from it. That they won't learn anything from it and more importantly that EA is going to now say, "Oh, it's fine. We can just release a game." And the rest of the game industry, for that matter, will be like, oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. We can release a game in whatever state we want. And, you know, Bethesda just the style. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. Bethesda, Bethesda's same thing is if they get away with it, they're going to think that they don't actually have to comp have to make a competent game and they can just try to continually monetize it afterward. And uh, maybe if we put a game in it later, eventually it's going to be fine anyway and people will forgive our sins. No. I want a damn game at the start. I want a game that is a complete game, that is something I actually play, and where I make interesting choices at the start. I don't need it a year afterward, and I you don't really need it a year wish after you pay for it. A year after you pay for it, but the irony for me is it's a terrible business model. I have an issue like with early releases as well. This is the entire reason that I won't pre-order games. Mm -hmm. Um, because I don't know what the end product is going to be if I cannot play the game before. Like, yeah, I'll be real honest with you right now, Nathan. Mm -hmm. If I don't know how a game might play and I don't know if I'm going to be interested in it, I will pirate the game. Yeah, because I want to see if it's worth giving my money to. If I can only spend like three hours playing this game before I get bored, it's like I'm not going to spend sixty dollars on it. I didn't, I, you know, I'm not going to play more than this. I'm not going to finish it. Yeah, I'm not going to replay it. It's like. Yeah. I got a test run, basically a demo of it, and now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy it. But if I like it, I will 100% go out of my way to buy the game. I did it with the game Space Marine back when that came out. Oh yeah, uh, from THQ. I couldn't afford it at the time. I was like, this sounds like a really fun game. I wanted to see if my computer could run it too at the time, so I torrented it, and I ended up liking it, and ended up buying it and buying a couple of the DLC for it because I thought it was good. Yeah. Uh, once upon a time, I would prepay for stuff. I don't do that anymore. And yeah. I, I haven't done it for a very long time. And I think that that's the reason why I say it's a terrible business model now. Because gamers, by and large, have started to realize that if the game is not going to be a complete, competent game that I enjoy out of the gate, why wouldn't I just wait a year for it to actually 
try to be what it was going to be, and it's probably going to drop to 30 bucks anyway from full price. So many of these games that I see in the pre-order, or not the pre-order, in the early release section of, like, Steam, I go, cool, When? how long has it been out for? Yeah. For instance, uh, early access for DayZ, it's still been in early access, like, five, six years later. They're not going to finish this game. Yeah. They've moved yeah. on to something else. They don't really update it or do anything else. So it's like, why would I pay for a game that's not complete, that I don't know when it will be complete? If yeah. it will be completed. Uh, Daisy is is one example. Ark was basically in uh basically a beta forever. <laughs> or oh no, the best example I can give, which actually kind of goes back into the free to play, is Fortnite. Fortnite for the first year or two it was out was technically still in beta while it was making a billion dollars. This has happened to me a couple times. Is I have actually bought. Some technically the early access or the game preview ones, but it was because the game that I was given already was a game I like. Um, yeah, Subnautica is an example of that. That was technically a game preview. That was not a complete game at the time, uh, but I did buy it because I was like, "Oh, this is really good. I want to play more." Anyway, that was us ranting about uh, <laughs> about predatory game practices. And again, we are not sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends, number one game on the market, 2019's most innovative RPG. 2019's most innovative RPG, according to Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> you can say anything you want if you quote yourself as saying it. That's right. Um, sexiest man alive, I said. Uh, oh, Ryan Reynolds, I hope. No, I'm the sexiest man alive, according oh, to God, me. Oh, God, no. You're absolutely incorrect. According to Twitter and the Twitter post I just put out there, sexiest man alive. There you go. I feel like that should be the cover photo for this episode. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not telling you what the cover <laughs> Nathan, photo is going to be. <laughs> Nathan, sexiest man alive, 2020. <laughs> sexiest man alive. Over, over 10 million downloads. <laughs> Alex, out of curiosity, <laughs> if uh, if people wanted to be one of those ten million downloads for something Delve related and uh, wanted to wanted to uh, become one of the Shadow Legends in our game, we need a Shadow Legend level for our Patreon. <laughs> we we do. Can you put a hundred dollar level for Patreon? And oh you can be the the raid Shadow Legend. It will be a season pass. I'll make it a, a season raid pass. season. Three. The yeah. Delve Seasons Pass will oh. let you download Raid Shadow Legends as many times as you'd like. <laughs> yeah, that's the special thing that you get at the Shadow Legends level. <laughs> oh my god, folks, it's happening. We're, we've got so many possibilities here. You can find more Raid Shadow Legends over at DelveCast.com. Yeah, that's right. You can find uh, the episode about this, uh, other episodes that we've done where, where we bitch about games, uh, other, yeah, other things where we actually talk about the design of games, not poor game design like this episode was, but good ones, uh, and all of the other various videos and podcasts that we do, and articles for that matter. All the things Nathan does. All the other things that I do in all of my massive spare time. You can find us on the internet as well. I am at Citanium on Twitter. I'm at EXP Limited, where I'm kind of being a little bit more active. Maybe kind of, I don't know. People still suck. Uh, yep. And you can find the show at Dell Podcast. Yep. And uh, I do want to send a big shout out to our Shiny Level patrons. Uh, don't we have a third one now? We do. I want to make mention of that. We have uh, the Bonnie Ainsworth. We have the Dominic Perry. And joining the ranks of the Shiny is Nick. Nick, thank you for joining the shiniest of people. You help keep the lights on. That's why you're shiny. They keep the digital lights on. That we get shine gets. Uh, so thank you. We now, yeah, we now have three shiny patrons, uh, and that's great. If you would like to consider becoming a patron on any level, uh, there is a banner right at delvecast.com. You can click on there, check it out. You get some stuff early. You get some work product that uh, doesn't usually make it out to the masses. Some stuff that we're working on. We actually do have to work on a couple of our uh, pilots that we've been th talking about, too. But when we do, they will start up on, on that patron site. So, something to consider. 
Uh, that's our early access to you. That's our early access. Yes, that's right. Oh, God, we're doing a live service, Alex. <laughs> Shit. Everyone cancel your Patreon subscriptions now. We can't, All, what, we can't, four of them? Five of them? Six. We have six. Six patrons? Yeah, we have All six, six of you need to cancel right now. We're doing a live service, and this is not okay. We, we, we didn't. But you see, it's either that or we take a sponsorship from Ray Shadow <laughs> Legends. <laughs> So I wonder a, which would provide more money at this point. I don't know. I think Raid's throwing around quite a... They, they must be throwing around quite a bit of cash for the outlets that they've gotten sponsorship deals from. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure like the John Trons and, and even the Chris Duckmans of the world did not like take 20 bucks and call it a day. <laughs> There must have been some money involved. I mean, considering I see the ads on uh, King of Random, which has 10 million subscribers. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, some money involved. I'm pretty sure thrown out a couple, a, couple, a couple thousand dollars an ad. That's why I say I don't really bemoan people that took that deal, because if somebody came to me and, like, I was like, yeah, this product doesn't look great, but here's, here's a bag of money, I would have a hard time turning that down. Thank you for joining us on this episode. And uh, we are hopefully going to be getting back into the swing a little bit more and doing some more episodes. Uh, and if you have any topics that you'd like us to cover, or if you'd like to join us for some of our live episodes, you know where to reach us. Uh, thank you for joining us here on Delve. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Go play some Rage. Shadow, Shadow Legends. Legends. <laughs> Had to get that in, right? Yes. Read.